getting a chance to go back. Just getting a chance to go back and watch um, yesterday and, and talk about, you know, what we needed to do. And I talked to guard guys about kind of what you need to do um, to win on the road against a ranked team. And, you know, I didn't feel like our discipline was where it needed to be um, offensively and defensively. So, you know, it's almost, I guess it's kind of poetic um, that it's, you know, it's Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And, um, you know, that the time is always right to do what is right. And, you know, that, that, that kind of quote has a lot of meanings in a lot of different ways. And, you know, we use it as a basketball program as well. I, I spend a lot of my time talking about do your job. And I didn't feel like we did that as a, as a team and we got to be better. Our discipline has got to be better um, for us to win on the road against a really good team. That's what you have to do. And for us to win at home on Wednesday against Minnesota, that's what we're going to have to do. All right. We'll start with Mark Brennan. Hey, Micah, thanks for your time today. Appreciate it. No problem. Hey, you're about halfway through your first season as a head coach at this level. Uh, how would you assess your performance and maybe what are some of the things that you've learned being in that seat as compared to being in the seat next to it? Thanks. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know if there's – you, you kind of go with the ebbs and flows of a season. Um, you know, you have to learn your guys. You have to learn your team. Right there, there may be things that, you know, I, I went in thinking about what we want to do or um, how we want to practice and everything else. And then, you know, you have to go based on how your team's feeling, how the game before it goes, when your time is afterwards. I think that's the biggest thing that I'm learning here is how to best manage time, um, how to have your guys ready for games. Um, that's the biggest challenge right now, I, I think, is doing that. And also, you know, learn to delegate as well. I mean, I've been an assistant for 20 plus years where, you know, you try and do everything and I, I can't do everything. I don't have time to do everything. That's why you hire good people and you allow them to do their jobs and allow them to work. And then, you know, I try and focus on our team as much as possible and, you know, make sure that we're the best that we can be on game day. So, um, it's still a learning process, though, um, whether it's year one, but shoot, it could be year 21. And, I, and I'm sure there are coaches still learning. So um, I'll give you that that answer when I'm when I'm finished at some point in time. John Sauber. Hey, Mike, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Uh, so why didn't Seth Bundy travel with the team to Ohio State and when do you expect to have him back? Yep. Um, you know, unfortunately, John, I'm not allowed to – university policies. Um, I'm not allowed to talk about injuries or illnesses. Um, you know, so that's – you know, I try to be as forthcoming with you guys as possible. Um, but, you know, at some point in time, my, my hands are tied behind my back in terms of what I can say. Um, you know, that's a, that's a matter that – you know, we're not allowed to speak on right now. I, he's day to day right now. Um, you know, we're looking forward to having him back and hopefully it's soon um, in terms of when we get him back. So, you know, I, I can tell you right now that like we could have used him. We could have definitely used him. Um, but, you know, I'm not at liberty to say right now. I'm sorry that I can. Andrew Clay. Coach, um, I asked the players this last week uh, if the Purdue loss. I know you guys don't always see um, positives necessarily in losing, but now that you do have the close loss to Purdue, you have the close loss to Ohio State that you did without Seth. I mean, where do you, what confidence do you have in this team now as compared to where it was at the beginning of the year? I think we're constantly growing. I think we're constantly getting better. Um, I've always thought this team would take time you know, with a lot of new pieces, um, a lot of guys playing together for the first time, um, everybody playing for me for the first time, right? So it's a constant learning process, and I thought we would get better as the season went on. Um, I think we're still going to get better. I don't think we're a finished product yet. So 
but one thing you you kind of have to learn from and you know our our quote all last week was good is the enemy of great and i don't feel like we handled the little bit of success that we had very well right i, I talked about it in the first question that or in the opening statement i didn't think our discipline was great yesterday like we don't traditionally foul people and send people to the line. They shot 34 free throws, right? Uh, I think a huge part of that was because of us and how we played. We prepared the, the right way. I thought we were pretty locked in defensively. Um, we did good things offensively, better, you know, when I went back and watched it than what I thought originally. But I don't think we handled small pieces, parts of success. I, I don't think we did that very well. And, um, you know, as a program that expects, like, I expect us to win every game. I expect us to, like, play in the NCAA tournament, like, win games, stack games on top of each other, go on winning streaks. Like, don't let that, don't be happy with being close with somebody else. And now we're, we've arrived. We haven't arrived. We haven't done anything. We're, we're below 500 in this league. And until we get where we want to be, I'll never be satisfied. David Eckert. Hey, Micah, thanks for your time today. Yep, how you doing? Doing good, thanks. Um, I was talking to Jalen Pickett a little bit last week. Um, <clears throat> he was, I guess, kind of describing how he's always had to be an intelligent player because he hasn't always necessarily had to have the athletic had the athleticism um, to go with it. I guess. For you, how important is having an intelligent guy in that spot in your system? And what about Jalen made you seek him out? Thanks. Yeah, I, I think um, his experience, I think, was was another thing that, you know, that I wanted to, you know, as we're looking to fill our roster, you know, having guys that around, you know, we had older guys, right? We had John, we had Miles. You know, then we get Seth eventually, like having older guys with them, I thought was important, right? You don't want to be, have a bunch of old guys or three old guys and then a bunch of new guys, right? Nobody's on the same level. Nobody's at the same plane in terms of where their learning is. So him having experience in college basketball, him being able to understand the game, like having somebody that's going to have the ball in their hands that understands the game. Um, Because, you know, we don't, I don't call a lot of plays. Like we do a lot of read and react basketball, and it's it's really built on understanding what the defense is doing, understanding how they're trying to take it away, now understanding where we can attack, and now doing all that in live time. And if you struggle to make those reads or understand what they're doing or you can't see it, like you're going to have a hard time playing um, the way that we want to play. So that means you're also going to have a hard time playing beyond here if you have thoughts and dreams of playing beyond here, because that's how basketball is played at the next level. Ben Jones. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Good. Uh, I was, I was curious, you were talking about how you want to go out and win every game. Obviously that's the mentality, but you've been in the big 10 for a while and sort of understand the pragmatism of playing in a really difficult lead league. You look back when, you know, Bo Ryan was at Wisconsin, nobody ever won at Wisconsin. How do you kind of benchmark yourself in terms of success night in and night out and over the course of a season while also having maybe a certain amount of realism to, you know, how difficult it can be to win in the league? Yeah. Uh, you know, you have to, right. You have to kind of balance the two. Um, but you also like, you can feel good about the results if you did everything you were supposed to do, right? If we prepare the right way, if we handle our business and practice every single day, the right way leading up to it, like if we play a game and, you know, nobody's going to be perfect, but if we do what we're trying to do. Like defensively, if we do what we're trying to do, offensively, we do what we're trying to do. And like, you know, sometimes your shots don't fall. Sometimes you miss free throws. Sometimes, you know, this, that, or the other, whatever it may be, but you put in, you know, total effort, um, total focus, then you can feel good about the results because you know that you did everything possible. And sometimes you can do all that and you still don't win, right? That's where you got to be like, hey, we did everything possible. Um, I don't think we did everything possible, right, yesterday. And, and we had an opportunity to win the game. Um, there's areas we got to clean up. If 
if we're cleaning things up and we're doing things we're supposed to and, and our shots don't fall, then I feel okay with it because I know we're doing everything possible. So that's where, I, you know, it kind of lays. Like we're giving ourselves a chance every night, right? You're giving yourself a chance. Now clean it up, be better. Now win those games. Like tough teams win those games, right? The good teams win those games. Um, Bo Ryan never lost at Wisconsin because they were about as disciplined as possible. Um, defensively, offensively, it was a grind to play them. Um, then they also had a crowd that would show up for them every single night. And, um, you know, the good and the bad. I hope we can get to that point that where we can count on, you know, our fans to be there for us every single night where we have it. You know, you play our the kind of style that we want to play and, you know, you bring a crowd in here that makes it, you know, super tough on the opponent. We're not going to lose very much at home either. Nate Bauer. Uh, hey, Mike, you you said um, that you could have used Seth yesterday. Uh, just <laughs> You're good, Nate. I, I, got, I, got, a, I got a three-year-old here. Um, what side of the floor did you most notice his absence? Um, and and just in general, you know, kind of how that trajectory has gone for him defensively this season. Yeah. Um, you know, we we had to move some some matchups around in terms of where he probably would have been. Um, but then, you know, offensively as well, we we missed some, we missed a lot of open shots, right? We missed a lot of wide open threes from the corners, we missed threes from the top, like. You know, if you think about it, I don't know. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but Seth probably takes 12 to 14 shots a game, right? So some of the some of those passes, some of those wide open shots are ending up in his hands. Um, and he's shooting some of those. So that, you know, that's where we kind of missed him. The ability to space the floor, the ability to give us another guy that could score the basketball, not take some pressure off of Sam, take some pressure off of Jalen to create so much. Um, you know, offensively is where it shows up the most. I, I, you know, he's been really good defensively and um, we could have changed some different things up schematically um, when they were hurting us. Like when they went smaller, it took away our ability to go smaller, right? And make EJ Liddell match up with himself, right? Seth did a good job guarding him in the first game, um, but EJ didn't do a great job of guarding him at times. So, that kind of took that advantage away of us being able to play, you know, he and Miles together and play small. And now they have to match up with us on the perimeter a little bit. So I think both ends, we missed him um, in terms of what he would have brought to yesterday's game. Spencer Ripchick. Um, hey, Mike, uh, Sam, a little bit more on that question. Um, Seth Lundy is only a junior, but what does he bring leadership wise that you missed on Sunday? You know what, he's um, he's been good about, like, really getting in and, you know, bringing extra work, um, doing extra work. Like, guys kind of follow his lead in that way. Um, but also, like, you know, he, he was good for us. He's been pretty good for us when we played on the road. Um, I don't, like I said, I don't have anything in front of me, but he was pretty good in the, in the Michigan State game. Um, he played well at Northwestern. So even when we're struggling – He's had good games. He's fought for us. He's made good things happen. And, uh, you know, when we go through stretches, when we can't score the basketball like we did yesterday in the first half, we went through a long stretch where we didn't, you know, couldn't, couldn't get enough offense, couldn't generate enough offense. You know, there are some times, some opportunities there where he could have had some, you know, maybe some drives, maybe some open shots, maybe getting to the free throw line a little bit, um, you know, in just different ways. So, uh, yeah, we didn't have him. So game's over. They beat us. They swept us. You know, I hope we get him again a third time in Indy. Joe Smeltzer. Hi, Mike. Uh, so uh, not to add on to all the Seth Lundy questions, but with him being your leading scorer and also a lockdown defender, obviously everybody within the program knows what he means to Penn State basketball. But just looking around the Big Ten in a conference that has a lot of good players, a lot of good teams, and with Seth being in a program that's still growing, as you mentioned, under 500 in conference, do you feel that he's getting enough recognition around the league uh, for what he's been able to do this season? Uh, probably not, no. No, but 
you know, part of that is we got to win, right? You win more, you get more recognition. And, um, you know, that's on us. That's on all of us. And, um, you know, that's probably everywhere in, um, in basket, in the game of basketball. Um, you know, the people that make the all-star team, you know, unless it's fan vote and it's popularity vote, like the NBA coaches vote for the all-star team. And they usually put two or three guys on there that come from winning teams. And then they go down the list and there's guys that score boatload of points and they end up not making it. People get upset about that. Well, help your team win more. So, um, you know, he's not getting enough for what he does defensively. It's still early though. It's still early. And, you know, hopefully he's, he's got some opportunities coming up. You know, we, we still got Wisconsin. That dude's a lottery pick. Johnny Davis is a lottery pick. Keegan Murray's going to be a lottery pick, right? Like there's three dudes in our league that are going to get drafted. You know, Jay Nivey, Keegan Murray, Jonathan Davis, who were, you know, top 10 guys in this draft coming up. I mean, he's going to have a chance to guard all of them. Um, you know, so. He can – he keeps – he holds those guys down. He can make his name. Um, he does a great job against, you know, whoever Michigan's got, Caleb Houston, whoever, you know, go back and guard Gabe Brown again. Um, he's got Ron Harper coming up on the schedule. You know, like there's a bunch of different people. Bryce McGowan's who people are talking about as a first-rounder. So, the Big Ten's full of guys, full of opportunities. Um, but the moment he starts, you know, feeling good about himself or beating his chest and saying, uh, I should – get recognized more is, is the moment some dude gets 30. Yeah. Cause you're not, you're not focused on the right thing. So uh, if we win, like good things will follow. We have time for two more. We'll go max and then Alexis. Hey, Michael, well, I appreciate your time. One out by the way, guys, I know you guys, <laughs> I know you guys all turned your TVs off here during uh, double overtime, but Boilermakers came back and got the Illini. Um, yeah, it was a big one out there in Champaign. Um, how you doing today? I'm great. Um, you, you, you talked a little bit about Jalen's experience being what stood out to you initially, but as you kind of started that courtship process with him, what stood about stood out about him, and, and what made you say, "Oh, this is a guy I've got to get." Uh, one of the things was just knowing kind of kind of what he's done. Um, you know, he played for. Uh, Jamie and Christian when he first got to Siena and they were a heavy ball screen team. Like I've, I've seen Jamie and I've talked to him. I know him. Um, I know how they play. So I knew that how we played would be similar to how he played that year, his freshman year. And uh, he had a really good season, right? <laughs> like as a freshman playing off, in the same kind of style that we want to play, not completely the same, but similar. And um, him being able to play with the ball in his hands, play off pick and rolls, score and get other guys um, open shots was something that was attractive because, you know, like how I want to play, how I want to do things. You need multiple guys that can do that. And like when, when we've had our best games, he and Sam have both been going. Right, they've both been difficult to stop and off pick and rolls, and difficult to to guard. Uh, so when you get more and more guys like that, the better. So you know that's one thing that immediately stood out was I knew how he had played before, the success he had had um, at Siena playing in that system. Uh, so I knew he'd fit in pretty seamlessly here. Okay, final question, Alexis. Micah, uh, Javon has been getting some more minutes since he's joined the team, and also Greg's been starting to break into the starting lineup and take up a bigger role. What have you seen their impact being on the team as a whole, especially since they bring more height? And is this something that you see having a bigger impact on the team as the season goes along, just them joining along with uh, John Hara and Jelani White at the forward position? Yeah, no, definitely. Um... You know, I, I know coming out of Christmas, one of our big deals was was rebounding. We needed to be a better offensive rebounding team. Um, you know, our, our shot volume was a huge deal. And we've made shots, 
you know, we're shooting good percentages and like effective field goals and everything else. We're just not getting enough cracks at it. Um, so we've kind of made the conscious decision to play bigger at the four and the five. Um, part of that is health, right? And, and having everybody available. You know, at first we only had John and we only had Jelani. And, you know, it's hard to play both of those guys at the same time when that's all you got. Um, but now getting Greg back, um, getting Giovanni back, we have more depth in our front court. And, um, you know, it allows those guys to, to play a little bit harder. Uh, it brings a little more athleticism to us. Uh, you know, Greg's gotten us some easy baskets, you know, scoring, posting up and scoring the basketball. So it kind of takes some pressure off the other guys that are trying to make a play every single time when you got a guy now you can throw it to him. You can throw it to John. They can both score with their back to the basket. Like you need, you need to get easy baskets, um, especially in conference play. You got to score around the rim. It needs to be easy. And those guys will all allow you to do it. And that, you know, Giovanni's helped in that way as well. Um, you know, he, he still isn't for, for being new, like, you know, he's playing out of position. I play him out of position because, you know, out of necessity a little bit. But um, you still haven't seen everything that he can do. Um, he's a really good passer. He can handle the basketball. I know yesterday we, you know, we ball screened for him. And he came off and turned the corner and dunked it. Like, he's going to be able to do more and more things. It's just hard when your first game is comes in the, the middle of January right, when everybody else's first game was in November. So they're comfortable in terms of what they're doing. So um, he'll get better as we go on, and he's got time to get better. And I think our team will continue to grow and get better as he and Greg uh, get more comfortable, get back to their playing styles. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Micah. Thanks, Chelsea. Thanks, Coach.